In 1971, Timothy Leary had an epiphany during a tarot reading that utilized a set of cards designed by Crowley. His revelation? That he was Crowley reborn and was to complete the work Crowley began, preparing humanity for cosmic consciousness. Leary acknowledged this powerful connection with the great beast in a letter to Wilson, observing that the coincidences, synchronicities between my life and his are embarrassing. From this connection flowed frequent references to Crowley, his philosophy, and their common destinies in Leary's writings and speech. Well, I've been an admirer of Aleister Crowley. I think that uh, I'm carrying on much of the work that uh, he started uh, over 100 years ago, and I think the 60s themselves. You know, Crowley said uh, um, he was in favor of, uh, of uh, finding your own self and, and uh, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law under love. It was a very powerful statement. I'm sorry he isn't around now to appreciate the glories that he started. The phrase, do what thou wilt, was taken from the Book of the Law, Crowley's most renowned work and one whose composition is worth understanding in the context of our study. While visiting Egypt in 1904, Crowley's first wife, Rose, began going into spontaneous trances, muttering things like, they are waiting for you, and he who was waiting was Horus. Intrigued, Crowley and Rose went to visit the Cairo Museum. From a distance, she spied a glass case and exclaimed, There! There he is! Upon inspection, the case did contain an image of Horus painted on a wooden stele. But what particularly stunned Crowley was its exhibit number, 666, his number, the number of the beast. Convinced now that something supernatural was happening, Crowley went back to his hotel and performed a ritual, summoning this higher power. Over three successive days, beginning on April 8th, the book was channeled through Crowley while in a trance. And the content of this revelation? I am the snake that giveth knowledge, the spirit said. To worship me, take wine and strange drugs, whereof I will tell my prophet. Falling on precisely the wrong side of the Bible's account concerning the fall of man and Satan's role, this snake spirit begins the revelation by telling man that he is a god, that reality is essentially an illusion, sin a myth, and that ethically there's no greater commandment than the law of Philema. Greek for will, as famously stated in the 40th verse of chapter 1. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. We do what we want to do when we want to do it. Today that same law has been written, spoken, or sung about by more contemporary artists than even Robert Anton Wilson would have imagined. John Lennon, Jim Morrison, the Black Crows Chris Robinson, and Marilyn Manson have all trotted it out in one form or another as words to live by. Harry Smith inserted it into the original handbook that came with his renowned anthology of American folk music. It shows up in songs by Mudvayne. David Bowie, The Only Ones, The Electric Hellfire Club, Alphaville, Throbbing Gristle, Numb, Ancient Ceremony, Eddie and the Hot Rods, Death SS, 
Theater of Tragedy, Cult Disciples, Therion, Psychic TV, Celtic Frost, Bruce Dickinson, Moonspell, Graham Bond, Sepultura, Edge of Sanity, The Lords of the New Church, and Marilyn Manson, among others. The band 311 not only uses Crowley's Law as a lyric, the bass player had it tattooed on his leg, as well as Crowley's Tree of Life design on his back. Punk band Unwritten Law had Crowley's Law written on their concert t-shirts. I'm closer to the golden dawn Immersed in Crowley's uniform Of imagery Among rock artists who have studied and embraced aspects of Crowley's magical system Daryl Hall, Sting, Coyle, and Killing Joke, among many others could relate at some point in their careers to Bowie's comment. My overriding interest was in Kabbalah and Crowleyism, the whole dark and rather fearsome neverworld of the wrong side of the brain. Director Donald Kamel, the man behind the underground film performance, used to enjoy telling friends that, as a child, he would sometimes be bounced on the knee of the wickedest man in the world. Significantly, the film starred the Stones Mick Jagger and Anita Pallenberg, herself a devoted occultist, and explored nihilism and insanity through the metaphor of rock and roll. The only performance that makes it, that really makes it, that makes it all the way, is the one that achieved madness, right? Kamel also played the role of Osiris in Lucifer Rising, the film by another Crowley devotee, Kenneth Anger. Anger directed and produced a number of occult films that utilized the talents of rockers Marion Faithful, Mick Jagger, Jimmy Page, and Bobby Beausoleil another Crowleyite who was later convicted of murder in relation to the Manson cult. And Led Zeppelin's Jimmy Page's fascination with the Great Beast is so notorious, it rates its own link on a website dedicated to Crowleyana. From studying magic as an adolescent, purchasing Crowley's old house, buying an occult bookstore and naming it after a periodical Crowley published, inscribing Do What Thou Wilt onto the runoff vinyl for the first pressing of Led Zeppelin III, even acting out rituals on stage that look an awful lot like those described by the Beast in his, quote, instructions to his magical order. Page meant it when he said, I've employed his system in my own day-to-day -day life. While few artists have shown the same level of dedication to Crowley's life and philosophy as Page, or the members of Coil, or any number of satanic metal bands, there's one sense in which Crowley's legacy has become central to the spirit of most of rock and roll. We'll discuss this in more detail in part eight of this series. But for now, understand that his primary message was simply, find your true will and then do it. Thou hast no right but to do thy will. Do that, and no other shall say nay. Every man and every woman is a star. Which, when you boil it down, really means there is no God but the man. This is not to say literally that there's no God. Satan knows there is, as do all men, if but just deep in their hearts. 
The crux of Crowley's demonic creed was just that each individual has no higher authority than their own will, that we are free to live life as we please. And this was the lie that the serpent hissed in the garden, and the deception that has become the siren chorus that floats through the world of popular music. Look into your heart, my friend. Never be the 